glad you took time out of your busy day to, to visit us. Thank you for, for doing that for our person first forum. Just a few slides to introduce the museum a little bit. Is, do we have any folks who are here for the first time? Wonderful. Great. Most of you. Tremendous. Uh, I did put some sign-in sheets there. If you put your name and the email address on that, you'll get upcoming notices of, of upcoming programs, excuse me. And if you give us your full address, we'll be glad to mail you a copy, a hard copy of our uh, bi-monthly newsletter. There's uh, also some pass-outs over there on the table and some refreshments, so help yourself to that as the afternoon progresses, okay? So we figure out what the slides here. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, another program, if you're interested, we do have a membership program, just uh, similar to other organizations. Uh, the memberships are a big help to us, not only financially, but they help us uh, with volunteers and uh, people who have an interest in the uh, Museum of Disability History are welcome to join in, into our mission here. Our mission is to increase understanding, acceptance, and independence of people with disabilities. So, uh, we do have a, a wonderful museum, which many of you probably haven't seen it, but your first visit, that's downstairs as well. When you have time in your schedule, make sure that you stop in to, to see that. We'll be open for about another hour or two after today's program, so you're welcome to consider that as one of your options, too. Okay? The membership forms are over on the table as well, if anyone's interested in that. And one of the benefits of membership is all of our programming then becomes free for you throughout the year. Room rentals, if you're a part of an organization, possibly a disability advocate organization, and you need a space to hold a meeting for any purpose at all, really, just see us. We'd be glad to make this room available. We also have a smaller room downstairs, which we, we have it on a rental basis, about half the size of this. That's my graduation party here. Yes, very good. Thank you for that, too. So uh, that's, that is an option that's available to you also. Uh, there's some flyers on the table for that. Uh, if you didn't take time to see the gift shop, uh, please do before you leave. But Pam's got a great assortment of, of many handmade goods, too, that are made by individuals who have been receiving services from People Inc., our parent company. Uh, some wonderful uh, things that you see that uh, not only benefit the museum, they also benefit the individuals who have made them and supplied them to the gift shop. And who can resist a cup of nice hot, hot cocoa or warm coffee on a day like today? Another shout out to Pam's store, the museum store downstairs. You see some of the items I was talking about, the beautiful scarves and other things. Uh, our next program is going to be Friday, April 25th. That's at the, uh, the Amherst Gibson Theater, right across from the South Campus of UB. It's called the Spring Disability Film Festival and Speaker Series. We're, this, we're gonna have uh, the film Raising Many Christian. We're actually involved with a nationwide premiere of that show. It is a movie depicting the life of uh, Matthew Matty Christian. He was an individual who was born without full limbs, all, didn't have uh, hands or feet, and he also was missing a tongue. And the, the movie depicts his life and all the struggles, of course, but the, the, the emotional trauma of his parents as well as they were dealing with the fact that they were, had a, a child that was born with special, special needs and disabilities. So it's a wonderful movie. We're going to show it two times on the 25th, uh, 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And in between the two showings, here in this room, we will have the directors of the film uh, doing a little introduction of uh, you know, why the film is so important, why they decided to get involved with it, and then a time for questions and answers as well. Okay. And uh, we're getting into the next part of the program. We're going to ask our curator, Doug Platt, to come up and introduce our speaker. Hi everybody, I'm Doug Platt, the curator here at the Museum of Disability History. Thank you for coming. Welcome to our Person First Forum. We created this as a way for people that are passionate about disability issues and want to share their thoughts, feelings, observations uh, with people that are also interested. Uh, this is meant to be a, a dialogue with the speaker and just a few words about the disability advocacy movement. Um, we have our self-advocacy, uh, speaking up for ourselves, a history of self-advocacy uh, traveling exhibit out, just as a refresher that uh, advocacy for people with disabilities or people that have been marginalized for different reasons is, uh, is long and varied. And what we've really done uh, to get to this point today is to move away from paternalistic state-operated uh, provision for people with disabilities and began to see things in a way that uh, access to society was the route to citizenship. Um, definitely advocacy can be seen as moving from 
of more enlightened thoughts uh, from Europe into Canada and then swept across America in the 70s and 80s. The 90s brought the ADA and next year we'll have the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act. So the ADA has uh, reached the generational point and one of the outcomes of the ADA is the further inclusion of people with disabilities into society. But just being in the room isn't really integration. Being able to be heard, being able to be taken seriously, given the opportunity to pursue education as well as goals that are uh, self-motivated rather than imposed upon from outside is really where the advocacy movement is going today. And we're lucky enough today to have Alec Frazier, who's been involved in advocating for himself and people with disabilities since he was a very young man. So please welcome Alec Frazier. Well, hi. So uh, a, br a brief plug. Uh, does anyone know, if you've been here before, don't answer, but if you're new, does anyone know how many brick and mortar museums of disability history there are in this nation? Just this one. Just this one. Yeah. That, that's, that's how important this, this museum is. Um, I, I, I'd like to thank people again. I'd like to thank the museum for being a tremendous resource to the community. And I really hope that they can further their goals and that they can uh, become uh, a bigger, brighter endeavor over the years. They're already off to a great start. Um, we mentioned the ADA. Um, the ADA generation is growing up. I'm part of this ADA generation. There's a lot of other key legislation that we will get to in a bit. But you might ask, how does someone become involved with advocacy? Well, to answer that question, you have to ask another question. Who the heck am I? <laughs> I'm Alec Frazier. This is my website right here. Uh, the domain name is nothingaboutuswithoutus.net. That comes from a motto passed by the Polish parliament in the 1400s, which is that law should not be passed without the common input. And why that motto is so important to the disability population, nothing about us without us, is that people with disabilities have had policy made for them and about them for a very long time. Only recently did people with disabilities become an integral part of, of making those, those decisions, of making decisions about the disability population. The idea of nothing about us without us, no policy made about us, the disability population, without our input. Because it's about us, so we, we, we've got to we've gotta have a hand with this. Um, that's, that's been a guiding force in my entire uh, uh, life and in my advocacy professionally. That said, I realized that I could not uh, actually incorporate under that name because it's common domain. And also, I really don't want to take that name away from everybody else. So what you see up here is, I mean, this past Sunday, this past Sunday, I formed my own company. It's brand new. It's called Autistic Reality. It doesn't just deal in disability advocacy, although that's the, the main part. It also deals in a number of other things. Um, it deals in events management, such as uh, a symposium I put on, more about that in a moment. It deals with public speaking. It deals with charitable endeavors, social networking, and photography, those are my main areas of strength. Quite a grab bag, I know, but I, I, would, I, I love take, do, taking photos, I love planning events, and uh, that's, uh, those are strong points of mine. Um, now, uh, I actually arrived uh, at this position because I have a number of disabilities myself. Hip dysplasia, Sensory Integration Disorder, Attention Deficit Disorder, 
dysgraphia and digital intonia, which are, which are problems with the hands and fine motor control. Uh, bipolar disorder, highs and lows. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And Asperger's syndrome, which is a place on the autism spectrum. Um, that's quite a bit, but I've learned to live productively with that. I might actually even say that everybody with autism and on that spectrum can that. learn to live a productive life and can, can do great things with that life. Um, I also have to say that there are certain places you should uh, take in from influence in the autism spectrum. Uh, parents are great. Parents are great as allies. Parents should not be the key decision makers in the autistic child's life. The autistic child should be the key decision maker in the autistic child's life. Okay. Um, the the, uh, the uh, teachers also have a very important role, but it's the child, you know, when I was a kid, uh, my parents would actually have me in on almost all of my educational meetings because they realized that it was about me and so it, I had to be a part of that. Yes, there were staff meetings and things that I wasn't a part of, but the actual, uh, that was important. Uh, a side note, teachers, aides, paraeducators, whatever you may call them, include them in the decision-making process for the child and the education. They spend a great deal of time with your, your child. They spend a great deal of time with me when I was growing up. And they, to not include them in, in formulating an IEP is uh, really kind of stupid, I have to say, um, because they, they have such an integral role in, in well, I didn't even say they help, they help raise your kid and they help formulate your kid into the bright individual they will be. Um, let's see, I have been involved in a number of advocacy endeavors. Here I am speaking at a, an event at UB. So let me, let me promote that event right now. Um, April 12th, mark the, your calendars, write this down. April 12th, starting, well, re on-site registration starts at 8. Uh, if you are planning on registering or if you're just planning on coming, arrive at 8.30. It's at the Center for Tomorrow at the very south entrance of North Campus. It is UP's only disability-led endeavor, of which I am the chair. It is called the Diversity in Disability Symposium. This is our third year. Uh, there is actually a registration website, which I will get for you right now. Um, uh, let me type this in. You know what? I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll just send it to your mailing list. Um, I'll send it to the list of people who have signed in here today. Um, basically, there is a registration site. Uh, you, here, you. Sorry, I should have thought of this up beforehand. Great, here we go. UB's third annual Diversity and Disability Symposium, Buffalo Pride. This is our third year, and I am the chair. Uh, it was actually founded by a friend of mine named David Dodge, who is no longer a student at UB, but he is still very active in planning the symposium. We are, uh, we are the only disability-led, all the members on the committee have disabilities. Um, we are officially under the UB Center for Disability Studies. That's, that's our auspices. Um, the web page here is www.ubevents.org backslash event backslash 2014 Disability Symposium. And that is the, everybody who comes to the, uh, to the symposium must register at that site. We're going to provide lunch for everybody. 
pretty long, so that's a great idea. We're going to have a panel on transportation in Buffalo, which I know is a very important thing for people with disabilities and has been a key issue in that, at these person force forums in the past. Um, we're going to have two speakers. We're going to have Doug Usiak, who is the du executive director of Western New York Independent Living. Uh, I love the independent living movement. Um, I actually work there as a volunteer. Uh, and he will present on why disability right rights are human rights uh, and why they are civil rights. Why they are just as important as racial rights or, or, uh, or gay rights to, uh, to American constitutional law and why we are guaranteed by the 14th Amendment equal rights as people, as disabled people, as, as, as gay people, as black, white, Hispanic, as, as, as just human being people. Um, Doug Platt will be our other speaker and he's going to talk about uh, getting the word out about disability and he's going to talk about specifically how this museum does that. And uh, he, we will, uh, we will uh, be very glad to have him. And then afterwards we will have lunch. We will have a number of tablers at this symposium. Uh, this symposium will have tablers from around the, the UB community, wellness, uh, counseling, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, other, other things like, uh, like uh, the county is going to provide tablers, Frank Camarada from the county is going to have, have a table. Um, and then after lunch, we are going to have our panel. Now this says that the panel is going to include someone from the NFTA. Unfortunately, the NFTA, which is the big transportation uh, uh, for, you know, field in this, in this county does not, they are most likely not going to be able to send someone. That said, I've got someone at the UB Park and Transportation Department uh, looking to send someone right now uh, for, for this symposium. We've also got uh, Margaret McLean, who is a local person with disabilities and she's representing the consumer. Uh, I do believe she has some sensory issues, and that is an often overlooked part of accessibility and transportation. We always think of mobility impairment, but we don't think of sensory issues. Um, and we will have Frank, representing, uh, previously mentioned, representing the county's viewpoint. And we will have my dear boss, Todd Barwick, from Western New York Independent Living, representing the public policy point of view. Um, so, like I said, Saturday, April 12th, 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., might go to 3, probably only 2. Um, registration on site begins at 8.30. Uh, I give you the website. And uh, we are also on Facebook, as you, you can see right here. Great. Now, an interesting thing is something I will be promoting, at, I will be selling at this symposium. I've done a lot of disability advocacy. I, age 10, I was a public speaker for the very first time. I was in fifth grade. I spoke to a number of students, teachers, parents, other educators, uh, and uh, interestingly enough, a lot of Colorado politicians, I was living there at the time, one of whom, uh, standing right before me, was the Lieutenant Governor of Colorado, Gail Lord. And that was my first public speaking endeavor. Ever since then, I've been sitting on panels and, uh, and uh, doing other various speaking, and it should be mentioned before that, even I was doing various other advocacy, basically making sure that I was represented in education properly, but um, that is why on Sunday, this past Sunday, I formed my own company. I formed a company called Autistic Reality. This is our logo. It's trademarked. See the little TM here? 
The idea is that we are viewing reality through a lens, the autistic lens. And I had them exclude certain things from the logo. I didn't want a puzzle piece because it's my point of view that I am not an incomplete individual. I actually am not a puzzle that needs to be figured out. I am uh, a complete individual. I had them exclude the color blue because the whole idea of lighting it up blue is a campaign by Autism Speaks, which uh, is basically, for all autistic self-advocates, they're the bad guys. They actually uh, work a lot, uh, they say on behalf of the autistic population, but they actually don't include any autistic individuals in their decision-making policies. And they actually go quite out of their way to exclude autistic individuals from their decision-making policies. Um, there is another organization I used to work for for quite some time called the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. And they uh, are, they're pretty good guys. They, uh, they are very involved in activism, you know, rallies, presentations, uh, vigils, uh, you know, public mourning, uh, standing at the side of Autism Speaks, uh, uh, walks and protesting, and I, I figured I want to be a negotiator. I don't want to be a, a, a protester. I want to be a negotiator. I want to approach life from a realistic point of view. For example, there are people in the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network who believe you should not be able to say the phrase, that's crazy. Why? Because that apparently demeans the mentally ill. To be, I, I think that you should be able to use the English language. Um, you know, I, I, I dated a linguist for a year. It's just, you know, not something that uh, you, should, you should give up because uh, a few people have some, you know, I think it's a kind of strange notion that, that you can't say that's crazy because it means the mentally ill. So, um, I, uh, I uh, parted ways with the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. I still support them a great deal if you want to give them you know, some time, effort, resources, money, cash, that's uh, something I would completely support, just they're not exactly for me. Um, interestingly enough, the, their founding president, Arian Yemun, is the uh, co, he's also the first autistic presidential appointee, with, and he's also one of the youngest. I think he was appointed when he was about 21, which is pretty impressive. Um, Let's see, so this is, my, uh, this is my company. How did I arrive at this company from speaking to a few people in Colorado? Well, uh, after that, I uh, was in middle school and they were trying to expand the special education budget. And by the way, I, I don't like the word special very much. I, you know, I have a lot of special needs, so I have a special need to go to Disney World once every few years. I have a special need to go to the, to, uh, the Fan Expo in Toronto this summer and meet Stan Lee. Those are my special needs. I don't think that my disability needs may, may are special. I think they're just human needs like anybody else's need to eat or drink or something like that. I don't think that they're very special. So, yeah, that's my, my phrase on that. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, yes, I, sorry, I, uh, I am focusing on, okay, right, so I, I helped get that law passed in, actually it was passed as a state constitutional amendment in Colorado, it expanded money for all education, not just special education, after that I spoke at an autism forum, and then, you know, past high school, went to, uh, went to uh, uh, community college, visited my dad over the summer, in which case I worked on con who is now Congressman Ed Perlmutter's campaign. And I really like public policy stuff all the time. I worked for the town of Ithaca in Ithaca, New York for a while. I really enjoyed looking up legislation and, uh, and finding out what, what I could do to, uh, to help people. So it came time that I actually ended up 
working for the American Association of People with Disabilities. And the American Association of People with Disabilities is, I had a summer internship with them, and they are the nation's, arguably the world's, but definitely the nation's largest cross-disability rights group. There are larger federations for the blind or, or associations for the, for the hard of hearing, the, uh, but, uh, sorry if I'm not using exactly PC terms, but, um, but the thing is that, uh, that they are the largest cross-disability group. They represent people with all disabilities. And they were actually established by a number of people who have been very uh, key players in the passage of the ADA. Um, in fact, uh, for the longest time, their board chair was Tony Coelho. Does anyone know who Tony Coelho is? He, he's largely credited as the author of the ADA. In reality, it was probably written by his staff. <laughs> but, you know, that's... Uh, that's, uh, he's, he was a member of Congress for the longest time. Interestingly enough, he wanted to become a, a Catholic minister when he was younger, but the Catholic clergy does not allow epileptics to become ministers. So he actually uh, became a member of Congress and then ended up authoring one of the greatest pieces of legislation of our time. Uh, I spoke with him at my internship and uh, and raised some concerns about the ADA Amendments Act, which was passed recently. But uh, he's, he's a pretty nice guy. Um, so uh, basically, the, the, ADA, sorry, the AAPD, American Association of People with Disabilities, has uh, an internship for anybody who considers themselves to have a disability. And they, they do this every summer. They spend a month. Uh, May educating you on disability policy and how disability policy came to be and uh, at letting you network with a lot of sponsors. Interestingly enough, I, I networked with uh, a guy named Kevin Webb who is the director of the Mitsubishi Electric America Foundation, which is a key player in disability uh, support in this country. Um, they only have a staff of two, him and his assistant. But the thing is that they give a lot of money to disability causes. They're one of the key sponsors of the AAPD's internship. And they also sponsor the United States Business Leadership Network. More about that in a moment. And the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. So, uh, so uh, I, I met with all those people. Then I spent the summer uh, working for uh, the Library for the Blind in Washington, D.C. Now, a lot of the other people were working for congressmen, and uh, I, I listened to them, you know, and we were rooming together in a dorm at George Washington University, and they're like, great, I've got this guy coming in here today telling me that we all have to wear tinfoil hats and that, you know, <laughs> that the aliens are going to take over, and I, these are the kinds of phone calls I have to take. I wish I could have another job, and I tell them that my boss had paid for me to go to the International Spy Museum that day, and they're like, why can't I have your job, you know? <laughs> so, so um, uh, yeah, so uh, at that time, I still thought I wanted to become a librarian until the internship ended, and I realized I really wanted to do my career with disability policy. So this is the internship that changed my life. And uh, after that, I ended up working some with VSA, the International Organization on Arts and Disability. Um, if I may make one suggestion for improvement to uh, this museum, downstairs they mention Special Olympics quite prominently. VSA is equally important. It's just as important as Special Olympics. It was founded by another Kennedy sister, whereas Eunice Kennedy Shriver founded uh, Special Olympics uh, Jean Kennedy Smith, who was actually the former peace brokering ambassador to Ireland, she actually, you know, the deal that the Protestants and Catholics have over there, she actually negotiated that deal. 
Um, she uh, founded VSA. Initially, it stood for very special arts. Then that wasn't exactly politically correct anymore. So they now call it just VSA and the International Organization on Arts and Disability. And if Special Olympics deals with arts and, I mean, with disability and sports, VSA is very involved with disability and arts. Their goal is for every school in the nation to have artwork uh, made by people with disabilities. Their goal is to have every public building in the United States with artwork with disabilities. I would go even further and say that every building, period, should have artwork by people with disabilities. Um, they work on a number of other matters. When I was an APD intern, I met with Her Honor, uh, the ambassador, and uh, and uh, she uh, basically, what, you know, she was very humble. She came in, blew her nose, and basically, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, asked us what we could do to inform her on what the youth of today wants. With, with you know, it's amazing that this woman is about 90 years old, and she was asking us kids what we wanted uh, to have seen <coughs> done with the art world and the disabilities and the disability art world. Um, at the end, I said something. I said, uh, and but what happened as a result completely surprised me. I said, uh, I said, Your Honor, the work that you, you and your family have done for people with disabilities makes life that much more worth living. What she did is she gave me a standing ovation, and that was one of the greatest honors I've ever gotten. So. Um, so I, I started working on this, this symposium committee to plan the uh, to plan uh, this the, the symposium that I invited you all to. Uh, let's see, um, and I also worked a lot with the Autistic Self Advocacy Network. For that network, I also published my first book. Except I was only one of many authors for that book. It was called Empowering Leadership, a Systems Change Guide for Autistic stu College Students and Those with Other Disabilities. The goal was that people, who, who's the best guide for students with disabilities to, who want to go to college? Well, autistic college students, of course, and then kid, other, other college students with other disabilities. It wasn't just autistic college students, it was students with various disabilities. So for a long time, you've had, you know, Dr. Phil tells you how to, uh, how to go to college and, you know, as a student with disabilities. Well, Dr. Phil, I, I, I'd say I would trust a lot of vetted, reviewed, edited, and, and you know, uh, very well uh, respected students with disabilities more than I would respect some guy from Texas who has a so basically, um, that's that was uh, one of the things I did for the Autistic Self Advocacy Network. Um, now, uh, after that, through the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, I learned that a group called the United States Business Leadership Network was looking for in for uh, yet another unpaying position. You'll find that paying jobs are very difficult for the disability community. Does anybody know the unemployment rate for people with disabilities in Buffalo? It's about 74%, which is twice the national average. It's, it's, it's hideous. It's absolutely hideous. And one thing I have found in Buffalo and in many other communities I've been to is that a lot of token jobs are given to people who are obviously disabled because, you know, uh, not, not because the companies actually, and this is, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm being very brash and honest about this, but a lot of the companies basically think it'll look good if they hire someone who's obviously disabled. They don't care about whether that person has any actual power in their job. They care about it looking good for, for people. Um, I 
do not strike people as obviously disabled, so I don't even get the pity drops that, that people, you know, send out that way. Um, I am 27 years old, have never been uh, gainful paid employment in my life. I've been paid through, uh, well, I was for three hours. <laughs> I've, been, I've been paid through uh, subsidized jobs that are given uh, to people with disabilities, and I have been gainfully employed, not paid. The only gainful paid employment I had that I've gotten on my own that wasn't subsidized was three hours photographing a comic book convention, and I got 30, 30 bucks for that. It was 10 hours an hour, not a bad idea. Um, so that's. Uh, so basically, the U.S. Business Leadership Network focuses on making business accessible. It's a really wonderful thing because they don't work necessarily on ramps and uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, automatic doors and things like that. They work on making the marketplace accessible. They work on making competition in business friendlier to people with disabilities. They have a whole lot of affiliates around the nation. I am actually currently their affiliate liaison for the Student Advisory Council. They have a Student Advisory Council. They ask for students' point of view in everything they do because they realize that students are the employees of the future and they want to get a youth point of view on this. So they, uh, they uh, asked for, for youth point of view, and the, there are some officers on this board. There's a secretary, which was just activated this year. There's a, a chair and a vice chair. And there's also something that was activated last year, the affiliate liaison. That's me. I'm now an officer on this student advisory council, and that means that I have to hold a, uh, we, we have a monthly meeting called the entire SAC student advisory council, and we uh, talk with, uh, with each other about what we can do to move forward the business agenda and the business agenda among students, and most importantly, a, bus a business quality agenda. You know how the human rights campaign has a, a human rights index? for its employment. Well, the, the U.S. Business Leadership just came out last year with the Disability Equality Index, which ranks businesses based on their disability and quality rating. And that's a really wonderful idea. So, uh, so we, this, the, in addition, as the affiliate liaison, I have another monthly call. I meet with the affiliates all around the nation on monthly calls. And we, we, I, I came up with a wonderful idea for them, which is now going to be enacted. I want every affiliate to do an environmental scan, if you will. I want them to get to know everything about their area. You know, a lot of the affiliates are operating, but what's the unemployment rate? What's the uh, rate of accessibility to, uh, you know, various... Uh, I, I don't know, how, how do we know? We've never done a scan of the area. We don't know what's, what's important. So I, I want people uh, to find out all sorts of statistics about where they, they, they function. Um, our biggest event in the U.S. Business Leadership Network is an annual conference, which is often held in a very fun area. Last year it was in L.A. and we are, uh, our housing is paid for. Marriott is a very accessible company disability-wise. I don't know about other ways so far, but they, they have like an insanely huge disability uh, uh, equality uh, thing. And so basically they, they, they uh, host all of us uh, SAC members for free. And uh, then Southwest Airlines, which is known as the worst airline in the world, is actually a really good airline, and I like them a lot. You know why? Because they pay for anybody with a disability function to go across the nation if you want to. They, they, yeah, who cares if they have first class seating or not? The point is that they have given me free plane tickets for a lot of things because they realize I'm doing good work. And, uh, and so the thing is that the tickets are, are, so long as you get a ticket there and a ticket back, they don't care when. So I got, I got there a few days early and spent a day at Griffith Park Observatory. 
and you know that I love to take photos. I took tons of good photos of that, and I and I bought an awesome book, uh, an atlas of the universe, if you will. I also got to visit my brother who lives in LA, and that's really cool. This year, the conference is being held at the Marriott, which is the official hotel to SeaWorld Orlando. I know SeaWorld has certain um, connotations with various people. I have promised myself to walk, watch Blackfish, but only after I go this year. I want to go and have fun and then get all guilt laden, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, yeah, <coughs> we, our business conference, a lot of business people are very, uh, are, are, it's business, it's not like we force people to be, you know, equality minded. They have to volunteer to, to be in this position. Luckily, we've got a lot of good businesses right south of here in Pittsburgh is Vendor Consulting. Vendor Consulting is arguably the biggest disability temp agency in the world. And uh, Joyce Bender is a dear friend of mine, and, uh, and she comes to all of these conferences. Okay, so recently we're getting towards the end of the personal advocacy experience. Um, this, uh, let's see, in May of 2013, I started working as a volunteer for Western New York Independent Living. Does anyone here, does, do you know about the Independent Living Movement? I, I should say, yeah. Um, so, the Independent Living Movement was founded by a good guy named Ed Roberts. He's on that board over there. It was also founded by a bunch of other people. It's a collaborative effort. Um, basically, it is the way that the disability civil rights movement has manifested itself. It is, if, if you know about the NAACP for African Americans, you must know about the independent living movement for the disabled population. Um, it is now actually codified into law by the Rehab Act of 1973 that, uh, that the government is required to give money to independent living centers across the nation so that they can promote equality for people with disabilities. It says independent living, so surely all they do is help you find, uh, is help you find, uh, you know, a, an independent place to live outside of an institution, right? I, I, I mean, what if you've got a place to live? What, what if, well, no, no, they help with everything. That's the amazing thing, they help with education. They help you, uh, you know, we, I had somebody come in who said, help, uh, our, cl our class, our special education class is being pushed to the back of the yearbook in a separate section. That's clearly discriminatory. So we came up with a solution and we actually, you know, got the, the school under threat of basically exposing it to the press. We got the school to change their, uh, their decision with that. What do we do? We petition legislators. I actually went to Albany with my center. I kid you not, I went there. I got up at 3 in the morning, went down there, uh, down Main Street, and I, uh, and I went to uh, the center. And then we drove all the way to Albany. By 10 o'clock, when the rally started, we got to Albany. And we went to a rally, and then we talked to legislators. I spoke to Assemblyman Walter, the Assemblyman himself, and I also spoke to a staffer for Senator Kennedy. And, um, and as a result, Assemblyman Walter was one of only a very few uh, a, uh, legislators who sent a letter demanding more funds for independent living uh, to the staff of the legislature. Um, we, we, also, uh, we also work, let's see, education, independent living, want a job, you have a disability, you find a job. Here's the thing, no one can guarantee you a job, unfortunately. That's uh, something I've learned, but they really can help. They have a job club at Western New York Independent Living. You have a disability, they, they have a job club which can help you find jobs. They have postings all the time, they have a big book in, their, in the basement there, which has a whole lot of postings uh, on jobs. You want a, a job counselor, they can assign you one if you are deemed, 
you know, if it's deemed necessary. I think that basically anybody with a developmental disability qualifies, basically, and there's a number of other ways to qualify as well. Um, uh, they, they, they help the Native American population through a certain program. Uh, the, my boss, is, in particular, works in the public policy department. You want to know how big the public policy department is? It's just him. Well, and me sometimes. I come in three days a week, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, the other day, he said, he said on Monday, Alec, I've got uh, BOCES is trying to, I hope I'm not divulging too much, he's got BOCES is trying to ship all the students with disabilities off to a different school for their testing. Not everybody, just students with disabilities. What I want you to look in is IDEA, the, independent, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. I want the, the act that governs IEPs and accommodations and things like that. And I want you to find out if this act is, if shipping people with disabilities to a different school is legal or not. So I ended up looking and I, and I asked him a quick, important question yesterday. I said, is it just people with disabilities being put to this school? He said, that's what I understand, yes. And I'm like, then it is illegal. And if you want, Todd, I told him, I am a political science major for my bachelor's. I already got that degree. I'm now working on the uh, disability studies master's program. I said, I'm used to reading legislation. I am doing a profile of Canada's constitutional system for fun. If you want me to read the legislation and actually come up with a word-for-word -word refutation, uh, uh, something that says that BOCES is doing something illegal, if you want me to find the exact piece of legislation that does that, I will find that for you in a matter of minutes. And I did, and I provided it for him, and now we've got a strong argument for inclusion. So that's, uh, that's another kind of advocacy that I do. Um, like I mentioned, Sunday I formed my first advocacy uh, group, uh, my advocacy group. I'm currently offering those services completely for free. Advocacy, speaking to, and I, like I said, I don't do activism. I don't do, you know, carrying placards around. I don't, I don't do morning vigils. Uh, I don't do, uh, uh, you know, uh, big demonstrations. I like to negotiate with people. Because even if you really disagree with someone, if you're willing to sit down with them, it gets you a lot more respect from them. So uh, I, I am willing to, uh, uh, I'm getting towards the end here, and then we can take some questions. Um, uh, we, uh, I, here's the thing, I'm willing to do photography for events. I've got the comic book store owner who has me doing photography of every free comic book event that he does all his conventions and so on and so on. I do event planning on Facebook. I moderate a few pages and I'm willing to do that, you know, basically for free. The only thing I charge for, which is something that I came up with an idea for myself, I took my first class in uh, disability studies last semester. We were supposed to do a literature review as a final project. I came across some piece of news during class, which was the first autistic superhero in comics came out last year. Yes, technically it's a hero that exists in the future, but it's guaranteed it's going to happen. And it's, it's a future storyline. It belongs, it's an entitled Daredevil. And, uh, and, so, and the wonderful thing is they treat this character like anybody else. They never actually mention autism in the comics. It, the, the autism was mentioned in an interview by the author. And the, the, the character is treated as anybody else. And that is what we, the autistic people, in the autistic reality want. We want to be treated like anybody else. And so I came out with a book. This is the preliminary cover. I'm getting the printed copies on, on, uh, on Monday. I had to do certain things to make sure that it did not uh, violate copyright. Um, for example, I had to take the double D off the, the chest. This is not the regular Daredevil you see in comics today. This is the future one, as mentioned in those specific stories. I did the literary review, and 
I, and I uh, had the idea of publishing the literature review, I asked my advisor, Mike Rempus, I asked him, is there a way that I can get this published? He said, this is your first paper for your master's. I wouldn't recommend that unless you're willing to you know, spend two years on it and make a thesis out of it. And I said, well, you know, I'm doing something else for my final project. I'm doing a symposium for my final project. And, and he said, well, you, as a comic book fan, might know somebody in the community who can publish it. Unfortunately, you're almost certainly going to have to publish it online because there's nobody who publishes anything, you know, physically anymore. I asked my friend Emil, the owner of the comic book store, I asked him, is there a way I can put this in your anthology, your Visions anthology? And he, he said, unfortunately, I think not because it's not that kind of work. Well, he calls me the next Monday in the morning, and he says, here's what I'll do. I'll give you your own book. I will give you your own book, and this will be your first whole book that you've written. And I will, and I will, um, and I will, uh, you know, use my resources in the publishing world to give you your own book. And so I, had, I have to pay for publication myself because that's not something he's doing. Luckily, I had a bit of extra cash around at the time. Um, I had to commission drawings for this book. I commissioned a number of drawings. Here's the character as a kid, as is mentioned in one of the storylines. Here's the character as an adult swinging over New York City. And here's the character on a rooftop right here. There are three illustrations. In addition, there's a colored photo of me. Uh, four color illustrations were allowed in this book. Um, in addition, I'm, I'm doing like six pages or something of very important disability links disability links that I have vetted and that I know are friendly to the disability community. You will not find Autism Speaks in there. You'll find uh, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. You'll find the AAPD that I mentioned, the USBLN, the BSA, Special Olympics, and on and on. I do believe you will also find this museum in the list of links because this is a very important resource. You will also find my agency in there because it's, uh, yeah, it's self-serving, but that's, you know, um, and uh, I am going to have these copies to sell on Monday. And that is five bucks for everybody except students. If you are a student, then you get to pay for it with three bucks because no student likes to pay a lot of money for actually, and nor should they. So that is, that is uh, what I am doing. I have my own agency, Autistic Reality. I've got my book coming out probably on Monday, if not then on Tuesday. And I'm going to be selling it at a bunch of conventions around the state. So, if there are any questions, I think we can commence.